Kieran um, has a lot of experience in financial technology sales uh, in not just day tactics, but also first derivatives and MRP. He's heavily involved in all areas of the client engagement. And one of the things he cites is the proximity of, of, of getting closer to clients. Um, uh, and, and that's why uh, his firm uh, ha has a strong tradition of, of high uh, customer satisfaction as shown by independent surveys. What he's gonna do now is share with us how uh, how you achieve that client proximity, which I think we all agree is, is increasingly important in these, uh, in these times. So Kieran, over to you, please. Uh, thanks, Ian, and, and five points for pronouncing the tactics correctly. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to be following, um, I'm glad to be following the, the Wealth, Dynamics, Wealth Dynamics presentation by Anthony, because a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about today is pretty complimentary. Uh, to, to some of the points that Anthony raised. So generating accurate insights is critical for asset and wealth managers, whether it be for building new products to offer to clients or making the right investment choices. The right insights can bolster your core revenue and also drive new market opportunities. Relevant and accurate insights come from discovering connections and data both internally and externally uh, sources of information. The challenges many investment firms are facing, however, is that that crucial information is contained in differing formats across legacy database, often there is, as a result of mergers and acquisitions, which is obviously prominent in this space and, and likely to continue. Following in the footsteps of investment banks, we are actually seeing that wealth management firms are growing in their data maturity and building out data governance and data quality frameworks. The aim is to better understand all of the critical data assets that flow throughout the organization in order to generate a reliable base of information on which they can run accurate analytics. Before taking this to the next level and implementing AI or machine learning models, firms must get a handle on data quality and prevent the garbage in versus garbage out scenario. Some of the benefits of having a, a fully unified data management approach are obviously business growth, easier compliance processes, cost savings, and what we're gonna be focusing on today is leaner operating models. Hello everyone, my name is Kieran Seward and I work with a company called The Tactics, as Ian said. We're actually providers of a self-service data quality matching platform, as well as expertise. And we provide that to all types of financial services firms. I'll be talking on the topic of future-proof operating models democratic data quality and explaining what that actually means. With the recent experience of partnering with a leading UK wealth management firm to successfully deliver this model. So before I get into the weeds of data quality, I thought it'd be helpful to provide a high level overview of the standard building blocks of data management and position where data quality typically sits and adds value within the overall uh, data estate. So on the left-hand side, you have your, your business systems. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, the process data and in, in used in operational BAU, and I'm sure most of you will be familiar with, with, with some of those or all of those. Um, then you have uh, data governance tools, the likes of Calibra, Informatica, IBM, there's a number of products out there who provide functions such as data dictionary and a business glossary. This is where all the metadata or effectively data about the data is stored to define how all of the critical data elements should look. And this is what we refer to as the, the top down approach to data management. Uh, data lineage systems uh, use that metadata stamp to track data as it flows throughout the organization. This enables users to understand where the data originated from and who has made changes to that data at what point in time. You obviously have your, your master data management, which are the, the repository of the, the golden copy of all your, your crit critical business data. And, and finally, data quality. So other tools are available, of course, but I'll focus on the tactics today. Um, so data quality management ensures that data is fit for consumption and it meets the needs of, of all your data consumers across the firm. 
To be of high quality, data must be consistent and unambiguous. You can measure data quality to industry standard dimensions, starting with your most basic completeness, i.e. is data present? Conformity, does it conform to a particular format? Uh, to the more complex accuracy and unique, uniqueness uh, type checks. The root causes of data quality issues are often traced back to you know, duplication caused by database merges, format inconsistencies, or quite often human error. Data that is not high quality should not only be identified in plans, but also analyzed to identify the root cause and preventative measures put in place to improve data quality over time. This is sometimes referred to as the, the bottom-up approach to, to data management. So talking about how the, the sort of traditional approach to data quality and, and, and the sort of pitfalls of that. So on the right hand side, you know, you have the business units have requirements to stand up a data quality solution or a set of rules that they need to apply to a set of data. For example, marketing who require data quality rules to improve customer analytics. You've got a risk and reg reporting team who need to measure data quality uh, of reports before they're sent to the regulator. Um, and then you may, may have a chief operating officer who wants to assign data quality breaks or issues to stewards who are responsible for the data in, in, uh, in, order, in order to fix those or, or resolve those issues. And traditional data quality mo models are sort of hampering the process as they require programming resource to hard code rules. IT often don't have the resource to meet the demands of the business and they can end up with a huge number of requests to provide ready to use data that they can rely on. And this ultimately means the turnaround time to stand up data quality and matching solutions is, is far too long for the business needs. Clearly something has to change. So looking to the a future proof operating model as, as we refer to it, uh, democratic data quality. So what, what does that actually mean and you know, what makes it future proof? So banking firms have been moving responsibility for data quality away from IT and empowering the business users who actually know and understand and actually use the data to make the decisions and, and fix those, those data uh, records. These data stewards or data owners are identified across the business. They're the subject matter experts in their respective domains. The demands from the business remain the same, as you can see from this slide. It's, it's a, you know, this, we, we use the same examples in this model. However, rather than, rel than relying on IT to code or program the rules, you can empower a data management office or team to provide an internal uh, data quality service to the business. So to achieve this, you'll need to have a, a, a tool that matches the profile of the users, an agile, flexible technology platform that connects to all of your existing systems off the shelf, um, tooling to help you centralize and standardize that data quality operations across the firm without having the need to rip or replace your, your, your current infrastructure. The good news is that you know, you don't need to wait for the next big platform upgrade you know, to happen to do this. You can actually measure and improve your data quality now. You don't need to wait. And necessary features of, of, of the model. So the, the model needs to enable users to affect this, what, what is in effect a, a cultural change uh, within your business. So it's really important to make it as easy as possible for every profile of user who interacts with this new, this new process. So in terms of rule creation, you know, this is going to be performed by data ma management, data governance professionals who are typically data analysts, so they don't have any programming or coding skills. So you need a tool that ships with, with uh, this functionality out of the box to be driven by a, by a, a GUI effect effectively. Rules out of the box is preferable as many of these rules you know, these standard data quality rules are the same uh, and reusable from, from one solution to the next. 
Um, so in terms of automation of the system, the system needs to connect to many different systems or silos of information within in the business or, or externally to the business. Therefore, it requires smart workflow automation and a range of connectivity options that you can use out of the box. This component should allow users to schedule automatic runs of the solutions and handle all of the associated outputs. Um, it's, it's very important to also ensure that this model has as, as little impact as possible on the users of uh, sort of day-to-day -day job role. And it also must deliver added value. So one way of doing this is providing visualization of you know, a summary of data quality statistics in an interactive dashboard, as this can help to paint the picture for business users and allow them to understand the health of data within their own particular domain. Then, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, business data stewards um, or data owners are going to perform a very important function within this model. And that's performing root cause analysis and remediation of data quality issues. This can be achieved on a sort of record by record basis or by making bulk decisions on a number of records. AI and machine learning techniques um, can also be used here to reduce the vo volume of manual effort required by data stewards at this part of the process. And taking in consideration what Anthony said earlier, I'll, I completely agree. Um, transparency is, is crucial because you, you need to understand who's made a decision or what model has made a decision uh, for what reason uh, at what time. This then, you know, in terms of this model feeds back in um, into a sort of continuous loop. And by, by implementing this model, you can see incremental improvement in data quality over time. And effectively, all of those, all of those users or stakeholders are, are all, you know, have, a, have, a, have an improved process of more, um, uh, more belief in the data that, that they're using. And, and effectively, all of those users are, are happier people. So um, to summarize some of the benefits of, of this model, I have to say, I'm not thanking marketing for the, the number of animations in these slides. Um, um, so democratize data quality. It, it makes sense that the people who know the data should fix the data. So this model is facilitating that. Access control might seem a bit um, strange to put on here as a benefit, but ensuring that only employees with the required permissions have access to the data is very important for wealth management firms, which we find implementing uh, this model with, with, with a client of ours in the wealth management space, uh, who are currently using their Microsoft Active Direc Directory to understand which users are entitled to, different, uh, to access different data types. And this made it a very seamless process. Customer intelligence, you can achieve a, a greater understanding of your customers with improved data quality. Goes without saying. Um, single customer views, some, some refer to this as the holy grail of data management. So this can be achieved um, with the right blend of modern tooling and data quality and matching. Uh, easier data migration. So as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's a lot of mergers and acquisitions within, within wealth management space. So this model will put wealth managers in a really good position for when you know, inevitable, inevitable events like, like those I mentioned uh, take place and data needs to be consolidated or, or migrated from one system to the next. And finally, rapid response. So this gives you an, an advantage for unforeseen events such as you know, COVID-19. And I'll finish with a, a brief story from a wealth management client of ours. So as part of COVID-19 preparations, senior management undertook scenario planning. Uh, and one of the scenarios they investigated was how can they maintain contact with their customer base if there's no postal service? So this is a, was a, at the beginning of the, the lockdown. So email addresses are, are obviously vitally important as you know, these firms are sharing documentation, updates, or, or, or taking any opportunity to try and upsell or sell new products. 
So the question was asked of the data management team who are you know, the users of the tactics, how many email addresses are missing from the contact management system? The most basic of data quality validation checks, completeness, i.e. is there data present in those fields? And of those email addresses which are present, how many of them are actually in the correct format and so on? Um, so using this model and, and the self-service platform that we provided, the team were actually able to build and deploy a solution in under two hours. They then were able to configure an interactive dashboard within 24 hours, which gave them, you know, very, uh, very good insights into the proportion of present and valid email addresses. So they gave the, a demo of this dashboard um, to their uh, to their senior management team, and this, you know, this was uh, was what really well received and. They, they provided a demo to us and that showed a massive increase in valid, uh, you know, in valid email addresses since the start of the coronavirus outbreak in the UK. And the board were really highly impressed by the work um, that underpins this pretty seemingly simple business driven problem. And our client contact are actually shared internally how much this is you know, relied upon the, 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 the model and, and the framework and the, the technology. Uh, again, the, the fact that the data management team was able to self-serve this entirely, they didn't, they didn't rely on any external help, has, go down, has gone down really well. And our contact there is hopeful that non-data experts and senior management will now understand the business relevance and the importance of data quality improvement and how that can have an impact on business critical activities. So I'll, I'll stop there and uh, pause for any questions. So uh, thank you uh, for that, Kieran. Um, there's there's uh, there's a question uh, for you, which is um, how um, do I win? How do I create a winning business case for the new uh, model that you described? Can you can you give us some perspectives from hmm. uh, you know what you're seeing with uh, with your clients? Sure, it's uh, a good question. Um, so how how we've been doing this with financial services clients, not just in the wealth management space, but investment banking, retail banking, even data vendors, is by building a, a short, quick turnaround proof of value project. So, and, and the key difference there between proof of value and proof of concept, we've proven this model at a number of other firms. What we're trying to do in this short turnaround project is, is prove the value for that particular firm. So we have more often than not deployed this, uh, this model, albeit on a subset of data or a subset of rules, but built the end-to-end -end process out and included visualizations such as interactive dashboards so that the, the, the stakeholders can then bring that, um, you know, the, the evidence, uh, the deliverables from that proof of value project, show them internally to do a bit of a selling process uh, and typically, or more often than not, we, we've been lucky to, to uh, that that has proven a successful way to, to get a, a budget in place to, to, to um, deliver this model in a production environment. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Another, another question, if we, if we could. Um, you know, how, how are you finding different wealth managers? Are they receptive to uh, the, the growing importance of data? So do they know or do they understand, does the business understand it has a, uh, an issue with, uh, with, with data? Are they, are they receptive to, um, you know, better, better quality of, of data management? What, what's your kind of experience on that? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. And so um, I joined the tactics seven years ago. And at that point, uh, we, were, we were banging the drum, primarily targeting investment banking firms. Who are starting to see, really see the importance of, of data quality management, and I think that you know following the investment banking firms, retail banking firms followed suit. Um, asset managers, wealth managers, and insurance firms are now sort of growing in their data maturity, and we're definitely seeing a lot of interest um, uh, and um, you know in this type of model, and we're definitely seeing that certainly. You know, data management professionals within these wealth management firms understand the importance of data quality. As I said in my presentation, selling that to senior management 
um, maybe a different story. Um, but you know, by by providing you know by providing real life results such as the you know the, the COVID nineteen use case, that makes this you know all, you know all the, all the easier. Thank you for that. Then uh, one last question for you. I mean, given the current environment, you know, is is now quite different. Uh, you know, you know. I mean, how do you do you think the COVID nineteen and the associated changes we're now seeing? Do do you think that will prove to be a big jolt in terms of you know data governance and data management? You know, data becoming more important going forward, or do you think after things? Uh, revert back to normal, whatever the new normal is, that, that the, you know, the uh, tension will shift away from data. Do you think it's a permanent change or a, a, a shift, or do you think it's something temporary that, that people will return to their old ways of, you know, perhaps, uh, as you described, sort of ineffective or poor data management? What's your Yeah, view? again, another really good question. So I, I, hope, I hope it's a permanent change. And uh, as I used in the, the, the sort of basic example at the end of my presentation, I hope that this is, has proven the importance of, of you know, you know, improving your, your data quality and getting a better handle on data quality because digital engagement is obviously more prevalent than ever. Uh, and hopefully that has highlighted the fact. I have no doubt and I hope to be back in the city meeting people face to face soon enough. Um, but I hope that people have, have you know, this current situation has, has even risen the, the, the importance of data quality even more. Um, interestingly, uh, during the lockdown period, Ian, we, we've had a, we've actually had an uplift in engagement from, from customers. And I don't know whether that, that is a result of this has highlighted the fact that they need to improve their data quality, or perhaps it was one of those things that they put further down the priority list. And when they were working from home, they thought, oh, do you know what, I have time to look at this now. Um, but certainly, um, you know, we have a, a lot of engagement with not just wealth management firms, as I said, but also asset managers, insurance firms. And we've, you know, we've always maintained contact with the, the banking organizations. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very much indeed, Karen. And, and uh, I'm sure I speak for everybody that we are also looking forward to, uh, you know, the opportunity to get back to face to face uh, yeah. meetings eventually <laughs> at some point. So thank you yeah. very much indeed for your presentation. Thank and you. I'm answering the questions.